Good morning. Welcome to our live stream service from Southport Christian Center in National City. We're so glad that you have come to join us in person. And if you're listening in with live stream, we invite you to join us. It's going to be a glorious moment. We're going to celebrate a lot of things today, God's goodness most of all to us. Amen? Amen. Aren't you so grateful for that? If you have your Bible, turn with me to Psalm 71. And those in the room, would you stand for the reading of God's word? In you, O Lord, I put my trust. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness and cause me to escape. Incline your ear to me and save me. Be my strong refuge to which I may resort continually. You have given the commandment to save me, for you are my rock and my fortress. Deliver me, O my God, out of the hand of the wicked, out of the hand of the unrighteous and cruel man. For you are my hope, O Lord God. You are my trust from my youth, for I have been upheld from birth. You are he who took me out of my mother's womb. My praise shall be continually of you. I have become as a wonder to many, but you are my strong refuge. Let my mouth be filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. And listen to this, older ones. Do not cast me off in the time of old age. Do not forsake me when my strength fails. For my enemies speak against me, and those who lie in wait for my life take counsel together, saying, God has forsaken him. Pursue him and take him, for there is none to deliver. O oh God, do not be far from me. O oh God, make haste to help. Let them be confounded and consumed, who are adversaries of my life. And then jump down to verse 14. But I will hope continually and will praise you yet more and more. Amen. Amen. My mouth shall tell of your righteousness and your salvation all the day, for I do not know their limits. Isn't that a wonderful verse? We don't know how far God's righteousness reaches. I will go in the strength of the Lord God. I will make mention of your righteousness and yours only. Oh, Father, we're so grateful for your precious word, for your promises, Lord, that you have left to all of us. You are so good. Today, Lord, we will sing of your goodness. We will worship and adore you. Receive our praises. Meet the needs of everyone listening in, those in this room and those at home. Thank you, Lord, for your faithful love to each one of us. We give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Remain standing as Steve and Mary lead it this morning. God bless you. Good morning, Southport. Amen. Amen. I was talking to the worship team earlier. Uh, back in the room and I just walked in and I just, David was just speaking words of uh, wisdom, prophecy, just words of life. Amen. We come to church because this is where we massage our spirits. Our spirits are, are, are filled. Our spirits are filled because this world just takes from us, takes from us, takes from us. You know, we, we constantly get darts from the enemy. But let me tell you, church, the song we're going to sing right now, Stand in Your Love, just listen to the words. I, I just, just when, when I'm singing this song, this is, this is, I'm just singing from my heart right here. Amen. This is exactly what God is telling me. Amen? Amen. 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 Come on. You're ready to worship? Come yes. On. When darkness tries to roll over my bones, Go. when sorrow comes to steal the joy I own, when brokenness and pain. All I know, oh, I won't be shaken, oh, I won't be shaken. Cause my feet doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My feet doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My feet doesn't stand a chance.
Yes. Yes. I want to know he's taking ground right now. Right now. I want to know he's pressing ahead. Amen. Into the enemy's camp. Amen. Yes. He took down Goliath. Amen. He's taking down the Goliath in front of us. Any Goliath that we may have. And remember, he fights the battle for us, church. A lot of times we try to fight the battle. And we just, we just can't do it. We need Jesus to fight the battle for us. Amen. Amen. Okay, you may be seated. There's power in that name, amen. Power in the name of Jesus. Say his name. Jesus. Say it again. Jesus. Once more. Jesus. this morning. We have some wonderful things to celebrate today. If you don't know Janie Bell, she is part of the furniture around here. She used to teach for us in our school. Janie, would you stand up? She has with her her beautiful daughter-in-law, Anna, and baby Anna. Thank you for joining us today. They worship normally with uh, Bishop Dixon at his church. And uh, I said, will he forgive you for coming to Southport today? And she said, of course. <laughs> <laughs> She's the mother of Corey Bell. Maybe some yeah. of you will remember him as well. Amen. So joy to have you here. We have celebrities in our midst today. Emily Guillermo, would you come please? And Noah, would you bring me the plastic box that's in that? Just slide it back a little and you'll see inside. Emma, Guillermo, come see me. This precious couple just came back from two days at the ocean that their sons provided for them, their children. Thank you, love. Look 
to have this thing with me, a brown chile and corota. <laughs> now he's very good with me and we together. Because when we got a fight, we want to pray right away. Do you, you know what you said? When, when, when yes, when they marry, I, I was a lion, they said, tiger. Only time we go, ah, it's a lion. <laughs> and call everybody, oh my husband, oh my husband, and everybody give me a lot of that. Stop, yeah. And, and they say, no, go to your bigger room. When I learn to come to the Lord yeah. and see him, he helped me through here. Yeah. Yeah. When, uh, that day when I asked the Lord, what am I going to do with this man? Do you want me to kill him or what? <laughs> for the Lord every day in this house, hauling tons of food in their car to give away to the community. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. Hey, thank you. Thank you. And they're good advertisement for tonight, couples. 
two more nights for our couples meeting, five o'clock tonight in this room. Don't miss out, it's gonna be great. And next week is our finale. We'll talk more about that next week. Now it's time to receive our offering. Our gentlemen are ready for that. Father, we thank you for the privilege we have of giving back to you what belongs to you and a very small part of what you have given to us. Our hearts are filled with gratitude, Lord, as you continue to meet the needs of this house. I give you praise, honor, and glory. Bless each one who gives today, Lord. Reward them many times over. Open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing they cannot contain. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. God bless you, Steve.
two days of vacation Bible school. Our theme was Haystack. We have not turned into a farm, but this is our beautiful barn representing what we learned and studied about it. This week, this place was packed with about 50 people, children and staff, and we want them all to come on the platform now, the children, and they're going to perform a song for us. And so you come and stand on the platform. Christina, our director, will come and help us. And we're going to put you on the platform facing the audience this time. <laughs>
say 25 little ones and maybe like 10 teenagers and then plus all my helpers and all of them aren't even here. But they're so amazing. Thank you guys so, so much. I couldn't have done it without you guys. Or you guys. It's <laughs> up. Yay. And we want to say thank you. my microphone, but here it is. It was a wonderful few days. Can you feel the excitement? Yes. Don't you wish you had been here? You can be next year if you volunteer with Christina to direct BS and work with her. That'll be wonderful. She was such a great director and we enjoyed it so much working with her. Thank you guys. to talk to you today about letting go. You've just seen your children displaying what they've learned in VBS. But you know what? Oh, boys and girls, you, you may go. 
I thought they had left. I'm sorry. <laughs> Precious at all oh, ages. Yeah. Yes. You guys bring us the most beautiful children and grandchildren. Thank you, thank you. But you know what? They won't always be this age. They grow up so fast. I look at a newborn baby and they almost change from day to day. I guess they literally do, don't they? Mm -hmm. Connie would know she'd work with babies forever. And don't they change so much and grow so quickly? But you know what? They will always need parents and grandparents yes. and a church family that will love them and pray for them and guide them and train them and be there for them all the days of their life. They will never outgrow that. When we move into different seasons in family life, we learn that taking hold of the life that we've always wanted means letting go of the life we've always known. Did you catch that? In other words, we let go of some things and we take hold of others. If our hands are full of our stuff, our will, our ways, our desires, there's no room left for God. So I want to talk to you today about letting go of some things. Just as there are seasons on our calendar, there are also seasons in our lives. Ecclesiastes 3.1 says, to everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. 2 Timothy 4.2 says, be ready, in season and out of season. Life is ever changing, so we must change as well and be ready in every season to hear God's voice for what he's saying at that time in our lives. Jesus said it clearly in Mark 8, 35. Whoever wants to save his life will what? Lose it. But whoever loses his life for me and the gospel's sake will save it. Doesn't seem like that would add up, does it? That you lose something to gain something. But isn't that what life is? Letting go of some things so that we can take others. Abraham and Sarah had to learn that life lesson, and it didn't come easy. You remember when God came to him at Genesis 12, 1 records the story. God said, leave your country, leave your people and your father's household, and go to a land that I will show you. He had no idea where he was going. He only knew where he had been. God's words to Abraham were a clear command with promised blessings. Reading on, we hear, I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. I will curse those who curse you. And in you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. If you're blessed today, it's because of Abraham. And God's blessing that he passed on and on and on through the generations. And Guillermo shared about many blessings that they enjoy. We sang about the goodness of God. That could be the song for all of us, couldn't it? All my life, you have been so, so good. God's words to Abraham were a clear command. If he obeyed them, he would have those blessings. Everything was contingent upon him choosing God's will over his own. He could have said, I want to stay where I am. I like it here. My family's here. But God said, leave it all. I have a plan that you can't even imagine. I'm going to make of you a great nation and all the nations of the world will be blessed because of you. Verse 4 says, I love it. So Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken to him. In other words, he said, yes, Lord. Your will, not mine. Life is like that. We see a door that says, obey me. And on the other side, it says, I will bless you. But you will never know that blessing unless you did the first part and obeyed the Lord and walked through it. The choice is ours to let go. 
to obey and be blessed in God's will or to hold on to our own will and our own way. If we obey him in faith, putting our full trust in his will for our lives and letting go of our plan, one day you will find a higher, brighter, more fulfilling life than you could ever imagine. As you know, I've lived a long time thanks to God. And I rejoice in his love and his grace and his mercy every day. God's way is the best way. God's way is the right way. I'll trust in him always, for he knows what is best. That's an old song, and maybe some of you remember that. When God called Abraham, it was to a land that only God knew about. God was leading him far away from his idolatrous family. God wanted to change his whole way of life. He wanted him to see him in a new light. He had things for him that he couldn't even imagine. He wanted to make him and his descendants into a messianic nation, which would bring salvation to all of Earth's family. It was because of God's blessing on Abraham that we enjoy what we enjoy today. Amen. Abraham didn't even know where he was going when he left. All he had was God's promise. Can I tell you, it doesn't get any better than that. Because if God said it, what does that mean? He will do it. Absolutely, you can trust him. God had said, I will show you. And Abraham obeyed by faith. Hebrews 11, 8 says, and he dwelt in the land of promise. That's what God does. He makes us who we are. When we say, when he says, I will, this is what he wants us to do. And it's contingent upon us saying, yes, Lord, I will do that. In our flesh, we are proud, independent, defiant, and self-reliant. Amen? We want to do it ourselves, our way. We're little gods ruling over our little world, bowing to no one. We want to be in control. We want to call the shots. Am I talking about all of you? We all like that feeling, don't we? We don't like to wait for God's will, his way, his timing. Sometimes we feel like God takes too long. We wish he would hurry a little faster. Abraham and Sarah had to learn that too. Remember when they tried to shortcut God's plan for their lives to have a child. They waited 10 years for God to give them a baby and they said, it's not going to happen, so we will take care of it ourselves. And they brought a child into the world through Hagar. We can all identify with being impatient and trying to make things happen in our life. Did you ever try to make them happen faster? Yes. However, it may seem satisfying at the time, but it always boomerangs back, doesn't it? You know what a boomerang does. You throw it, you think you're rid of it, but here it comes back again. After Hagar's child was born, their once happy home became chaotic because there were two bitterly unhappy women trying to resolve the problem that they couldn't fix. <clears throat> if you want to see an unhappy home, look for embittered women. And there were two of them. This can happen to us anytime we feel that God isn't coming through for us and isn't there to help us. But the boomerang always comes back. So we have a choice. God, I want to do what you are blessing, or Lord, I want you to bless what I am doing. I want the former, don't you? I want to do what God's blessing. I need his blessing in my life, don't you? Ishmael, the son of Hagar, was prophesied in Genesis 16 that he would be a wild donkey of a man. He would be against everyone and everyone would be against him in hostility toward all of his brothers. Ishmael became the father of the Arab race and they live in bitter hostility with the nation of Israel today. Living on his own terms, trying to run ahead of God, trying to make life happen, Abraham produced an Ishmael. If we decide to push our own agenda over God's plan, we too will make a mess in our home and in our lives. 
Paul warned Timothy in 1 Timothy 6, For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil, for which some have strayed from their faith and their greediness, and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. May that never be said of us. A restless desire to be rich subjects one to great spiritual peril. We lose something in the process. In startling contrast, those who plan, place their lives in God's hand and give their resources to God's hand and trust Him and look to Him for everything, get ready to take hold of a life that is truly worth living because that's what God has for the trusting soul. The Ishmael Isaac story, which was 11 generations from Adam and Eve, has a direct application for you and me. Galatians 4.22 describes it this way. Two births representing two ways of being in relationship with God. Ishmael represents salvation by works. Isaac, the child of promise, the miracle child, represents salvation by faith, trusting Christ and him alone to make us right with God. <coughs> Ishmael is what I would like to hold on to. Isaac is what I am willing to let go of. Which will it be in your life today? If we want what God has for us, we have to let go of something. If we want life on his terms, we have to let go of life on our terms. And letting go is not easy. Abraham was deeply distressed when he had to let go of Ishmael, literally sending him away. Letting go of something may be hard for us too, especially if we've been holding on to it for a long time. What kinds of things might God ask us to let go of? Maybe it's a position or a title. Maybe it's possessions. Sometimes it's people, a family member or a friendship that is harming our relationship and is between us and Jesus. Sometimes it's expectations. What if God's leading me, leading me in a different direction? Sometimes it's letting go of harmful habits, things that are destructive. Sometimes it's letting go of our tithe, the 10% that belongs to God. Sometimes it's our priorities that take precedent over God's plans. Last of all, it's our desire to be in control. That probably is the hardest thing of all to give up. Some people refuse to embrace God's plan because they feel so secure in their own plan. But our God requires a full heart surrender so that we may embrace His plan with empty hands. God calls us to surrender what is familiar and embrace what he knows is best for us. Maybe God has shown you a picture and you've looked at it and said, that's too scary, I don't want to go there. But you know it's God. You dare to take the first step and God meets you and around the corner are things you didn't even dream of called his best blessings. John describes it in John 12, 24 and says, Unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much. Life happens only when we resist the temptation to control it. Life requires us to let go and let God. When we come to Christ on his terms, he wants our heart. And such letting go involves risk. It did for Bible characters, too. Let's take a look. Matthew had to leave his tax table. He was a very wealthy man. And Jesus walked by and said, come follow me. And he had a choice to make. The Bible says he left his tax tables. And he returned everything to everybody, even double. If I robbed you, I'll get back double what I took from you. Wow, what a change of heart, change of life. We all know about Saul, who became the Apostle Paul. He left everything he had ever known on that day on the road to Damascus when Jesus appeared to him. He didn't even know who he was persecuting. And Jesus appeared to him and said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Lord, I didn't know. Who are you? 
From that day on, his life was forever changed. He let go of everything he had counted dear and embraced what God had for him. How about Cornelius? He risked his military career when he decided to have a Pentecostal prayer room in his living room. Peter came and the Holy Spirit fell on all of them. They began to speak in other tongues. And he was a well-known military career man. But he had decided, I'm going to follow Jesus no matter what. That's what my heart hungers for. And he invited his family and his friends, and they all came that day and found Jesus. When we come to him, we let go of our plans for life. And we hold on to his new plan for our life. We let go to receive eternal life. And it's a continual life of letting go. Have you found that? Other things will try to creep in and rob you of the joy that God has for you. Without thinking, we can embrace it and miss our next step. So we continually live a life of letting go of things that we cannot hold on to so that we can have everything he has for us. In Matthew 16, 25, Jesus put it this way. Lose your life for my sake, and if you do, you will find it. How could that be? Lose my life and find it? When you find Jesus, you find life. Amen? Amen. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You know, you people that are gardeners, when you prune a plant or a tree, it doesn't look good for a while. That's why I don't like calling the gardener to say, would you come trim our shrubs? Because they were vibrant and green, but they were wild and they were growing all over the place and they were scratching our cars as we backed out. And so we had to say, help. And now they look awful, you know. They're trimmed way back, there's dry sticks sticking out. But I've gone through this process before. So that I know that in time, they will be all green and lush again, under control. That's the way it is with our lives. When God prunes, it hurts. We don't like to give up some things. We don't like the way it looks or the way it feels. But if you've gone through pruning with Jesus, you know that it's worth it. Because in due time, the flowers will come. The green will come. And we'll be refreshed and renewed. New growth appears and it's beautiful. So when Jesus is pruning us, it may not look good. You won't like the way you look, and some others might not like the way you look either. But it's okay. It's between you and Jesus, and you know what's going on. Because he's getting rid of anything that would hinder that heart relationship he wants to have with you. Life will spring forth in joys that you have never known. It takes faith. It takes a reckless love that says, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it your way, Lord, no matter how it hurts, no matter how it feels. And the payoff is wonderful. What does Christ want from us? We sang about it a few moments ago. He wants everything. Everything. He wants your possessions, your passion, and your heart. He wants all you are so that you can embrace all he is. There isn't room for all of me and all of him in my heart. So I have to make a choice. I want all of him. How about you? He wants a controlling interest in our life. He may upset a few apple carts along the way. He will scramble some plans, but he will walk with us through every step. He will stretch us farther than we ever thought we could be stretched. There's some things in my life I would like to have avoided. But I've heard you trust him. His plan is the best plan. I don't always understand it when I look at the blueprint. Sometimes I thought, oh, Father, was that necessary? But God knows what he's doing. Because you see, he has a plan, and that's what he's working. It's different than mine. 
And I've learned to say yes to his plan because his plan is the best plan. We'll find in the end that as we sang a moment ago, our God is good. He is absolutely good. Amen. If we hold on to Ishmael, we can never produce an Isaac. So the choice is ours. I can hold on to something that is so inferior to what God wanted to do in my life. Or we can let it go and produce everything that he wanted to. Isaac was a child of promise. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they're all mentioned together always. They're our heritage. They brought to us what we enjoy today through Jesus Christ. We can never know God's best unless we're willing to give him everything. I don't know what the everything in your life will look like, but you know. And whatever God's asking for, I pray that your answer will be yes, Lord. And is there anything else you would like? Because I want all you have for me. Parents, the eyes of your children are on you. They are observing how you live your life. They're looking at what your priorities are what you have been willing to risk for Jesus. Let them see you making him a priority, letting go of everything that needs to go. Let them see you giving God your very best, the best of your time and your talent and your treasure. I watched this week as our VBS team, they held nothing back. When they were tired, they kept on going. I even had a young person come up to me at the end of the long day and he was exhausted. He said, Pastor, is there anything else you need me to do? I thought, wow, that's what God wants from us, isn't it? Lord, is there anything else I can do for you? Is there any more of me that you want that you don't have? Your children are observing these things in your life, dear ones. Your grandchildren are looking to you for leadership. How are you living your life? What's important to you? What do you put first? What do you spend your time and your money on? Let them see you giving God your very best, the best of everything you have, and they will never forget it. It will be their guide for the rest of their lives. When our children were young, we taught them to tithe. We taught them that if we gave them a dime, a penny belonged to Jesus. If we gave them a dollar, a dime belonged to Jesus. And they would testify today that they know the truth of that, that they have practiced it in their own lives. Matthew 6, 21, Jesus says, For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. We know that. We don't have to look far in our lives and say, where have I spent my money? Where have I spent my time? Where have I given my, what have I given my best to? Where our treasure is, that's where our heart is. Jesus knew that if he had our heart, he would have all of us. That's why he writes so much about our heart. Life is a series of letting go of things that possess us in exchange for the love and joy and peace that he wants to bring into our lives, that only he can give. Plus, the promise of eternal life with him forever. Is that an amazing way to live life? There's more to life than this. Are you aware of that? We're not gonna be here forever. One of these days, the heavens are gonna be rolled back like a scroll, and the trumpet's going to sound, and the King of kings and Lord of lords is going to descend from heaven. And we who are alive and remain will be caught up to meet him in the air. We call it the rapture. Caught up to meet him in the air. Is that day far away? I don't think so. I don't know how close it is, but it doesn't matter. Because I'm going to keep on living for him every day of my life. How about you? Until that moment. Amen? So that when he comes back, he will find us faithful. That's what he asked. 
to keep on doing what he's given us to do. I see that in your lives, and I love what you give to Jesus, and I just encourage you to keep on doing it. Don't hold anything back. Give him the best you have. Give him the cream off of the top of the milk. Remember when we used to milk cows? The cream would come to the top. <laughs> David's family used to own a dairy, and we've talked about that a lot. I did never milk a cow successfully. I tried. But when she saw me coming, she would not give her milk. I did not know they could hold it back. But if you don't do it right, it doesn't matter. So we would put the milk in a bottle and the cream would rise to the top. God wants the best of our lives. He doesn't want the leftovers. He doesn't want if I have time or if I have money or if I can, get rid of all the ifs. Say, I'm, I'm yours to command, Lord. Whatever you want of me, you can have it because I want everything you have for me. Amen? Amen. You will never be shortchanged because God doesn't do business that way. Life is a series of letting things go. Whatever he asks for, the answer is yes, Lord. And is there anything else? Let's live life with open hands, letting go of everything that would hinder our walk with Jesus and holding on to everything that he offers to us. There's a little verse that I read. It's not in the Bible, but it's a good one. Only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. I don't want to come up with an empty balance sheet, do you? I don't want God to draw a line here the sum of my life and say it was worth nothing. I want him to have everything I have. He knows it's his. You know where it came from? It came from him. He's blessed me beyond what I deserve, and I'm so grateful. But his blessings come from above, with whom there is no shadow of turning. He's never going to change his mind. Today, we have viewed the investment that we've made in your children this week. Parents, build on that investment. Let them sing those songs at home and share with you what they learned at VBS. Your hearts will bound with joy as well. Can I encourage you to keep them in God's house? Teach them that Sunday is God's day, and that we want to be there as a family. Come on, we're going to church today. One father told me this morning, my grandchildren are the reason I come. Because I look in their faces and they say, let's go to church. Yeah, okay, let's go. Wow, that's wonderful. A little child will lead them, the Bible says, and sometimes it happens in our very own homes. Keep them in God's house. Let them see you loving and serving Jesus every day. Let them see you becoming more in love with Jesus every day. And they will too. They will never stop learning from you. And can I tell you, they will grow up and be just like you. Some of you are saying, oh no. <laughs> you can change that. <laughs> Let them see Jesus in, their li in your life. They will want to be just like you. Never underestimate the influence you have in their home and in their life. I love you so much. I love your children. I love who you entrust to us. Right now, they're being taught in these ways in this building. They're learning about Jesus. But the primary place they will learn about Jesus is your home. The way you treat each other, the way you talk to each other, the values that you hold, the way you live your life, they observe. And that's what they will want to do as well. He's worth everything. Whatever you need to let go today to be closer to him, can I urge you to say yes? Would you bow your heads with me right where you're sitting? Jesus, thank you for your word, everything we learned from it, Lord, the way you speak to us so personally. Lord Jesus, I just ask you, Father, 
that as we go back to our duties at home, that we will reassess, Lord. We will look at our hands and be sure that we're not holding on to anything you want us to let go of. We say yes to you, Lord. And as our heads are bowed, if you're sitting here this morning and you're saying, you've been talking to me, I've been holding on to some stuff I need to let go of. Would you just slip your hand up so I can pray for you? Anybody here this morning? God said, I'd like to have that. Thank you. I see those hands. Thank you. And God sees them too. Thank you. You may put them down. Anybody else? I want a closer thank you. Thank you. You may put your hands down as well. Thank you. Thank you. You're so honest with each, with each other and with the Lord. I see couples that are raising their hands together, and that's so precious. Thank you for being willing to take an honest look to allow God to speak to your heart. Oh, Father, you've seen the hands that were raised, and as they sit in their chairs and I stand here, Lord, help us to make that dedication of our heart right now, Lord. To say, Lord, the things that I've been holding on to, I want to let them go. And I open my hand, Lord Jesus, and let you have them. And with that open hand, I embrace everything you have for me. I don't know what it entails, but I trust you, Lord. You've never failed me, and I know you won't fail me now. And as the worship team worships the Lord, will you just make your place an altar? Give yourself to the Lord like you never have
If you need prayer to help let go of some things that you're holding on to, could I invite you to come to the altar and we will pray with you. Thank you for being here today. We love you so much. Couples, don't forget the meeting tonight at 5 o'clock. You'll be so blessed. Your lives will be enriched. Mary and Steve, join me. It's a wonderful time of sharing. Whatever you're believing God for, keep on believing. Don't quit. Don't give up. Don't try to rush God's process. Be willing to let go of your plan for God's plan. His plan is the best one. Yes. Amen. God give you a wonderful week. Whatever he says to you, do it. Amen? Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for being here.